Hello everyone, welcome back to Lettuce Leaf. A lot of people have got Animal Crossing recently, whether it be a couple of months back at Christmas or since then with the money they've got for said event or like Chinese New Year or something. So I thought I'd compile a few tips and tricks of how to make bug catching and fish catching easier for you. Some things you probably do know if you've been playing for a while, but hopefully I can help some people out. That's the aim of this. <laughs> One thing that I do just want to mention is unlike some other games, the type of rod you have does not determine the type of fish you can get. So I know in like Pokemon, the old rod, the good rod, etc. varies in what Pokemon you will find with it. However, that's not a thing in Animal Crossing. You can still catch the rarest, heaviest fish with the flimsy rod. You can still catch the huge butterflies with the flimsy net. So you join me on Bamboo Island, which is a Nook Miles Island, because this is a very easy one to show you how to catch tarantulas. With this being a 10% spawn rate and Tarantula Island itself being like 1-2%, to this was easier than going through potentially 100 tickets and not getting it once. <laughs> so to start with, what I'm going to do is completely clear this island. I'm going to chop down all the bamboo, I'm going to pick all the weeds, and I'm going to pluck all of the flowers. Once that's done, there are more places for the tarantulas to spawn. Additionally, once those palm trees on the edges are chopped down and the stumps are dug up, none of the bugs that spawn on the tree stumps can spawn either, so the only ones that you have are ones that spawn on the ground. So that's your tiger beetles, your tarantulas, your hermit crabs, mole crickets and wolf roaches. Now although this is an easier method to spawn a tarantula, when this sort of hack trick, whatever you want to call it, was originally thought of, this was before they nerfed the rates for the spawning of tarantulas, so it can take a while, but it is an easier way than just waiting on your actual like home island. One thing that I don't do here that you want to do if it's raining is destroy the rocks that are on the island because snails can spawn on those in the rain, however as it's clear weather here, they're not a problem, so I'm just going to leave them where they are. When you do this, you may hear a sound in the background that you can't place on an above ground bug. Now these are the mole crickets. So these are underground only, and the only way to get them, to catch them, is to dig until you find which square the mole cricket is in. However, once you've done that, you can't scare them away, and you have a very long time to be able to catch them, as I'm showing you here. So once you have gone through the faff of trying to get the right space to dig them, you do have an extended amount of time. Another tip is that some bugs are a lot more skittish than others. Like I've mentioned how the mole cricket won't run away, you can't scare it. These man face stink bugs are also pretty resistant to you scaring them. Whereas if you have, for example, the golden stag, which is incredibly skittish, you like run on the other side of your island and it's off, it's gone. <laughs> There are some that you don't have to be super, super careful with, so they can be handy for when you're just starting out, getting used to the swing and the technique and your angles. Now you can see here, I have the island cleared. I haven't dug up all the bamboo spaces. So here we have a tiger beetle. So what you want to do is get your net out. And then if you hold the A button as you move slowly with the thumbstick, you creep like this. Rather than walking at your normal speed, you do a slower, more cautious step towards the bug you're catching. As soon as you let go of A, your net swings down. See, that's great for your more skittish bugs, like the ones in summer that spawn on the palm trees. And this tiger beetle isn't too skittish, but I thought it was a good one to show you on. However, what I am then doing is putting my net straight back into my pockets, because if a tarantula or a scorpion sees you with your net out, they attack on sight which sounds brutal for an Animal Crossing game, but like if they see you and they see you as a threat, they'll charge at you. One thing that new players of the game might not have looked too much at yet is the spawn times of the different bugs and the seasons in which they spawn. So we're going for this tarantula, which spawns between 7 p.m. and 4 a.m. In these specific months, the scorpion is exactly the same, just on the other half of the year. This is flipped if you're Southern Hemisphere, so I'm in the Northern Hemisphere. 
So if you're in the southern hemisphere, your scorpion is available when the northern tarantula is available, and vice versa. So after multiple laps around around the island, you can see we have our tarantula here. Now what we don't want to do is charge up to it with our net out, all guns blazing. So I've got my net out and I've walked slowly over it and you can see it stands up and it hisses at us. So I've held A, I want to creep a little bit closer, but every time its front legs come up, stop. Don't let go of A, just stop moving the thumbstick and then gradually get closer and closer every time it goes back down until you're within swinging distance you'll get the feel of that as you play a little bit and then you can swing down and there you have your tarantula <laughs> like i said this is not a super super quick method however it does work and obviously whenever you see a tarantula or a scorpion you want to do the same thing get your net out at a safe distance creep closer and closer stop every time its front legs come up and it hisses you won't always hear the hissing i found it can be quite quiet and then when you're within that swing distance of the tarantula or the scorpion let go of a and they have it <laughs> there are other bugs and beetles that you catch under certain conditions for example we have the wharf roach which only spawns on those rocks on your beaches you know the big flat ones or the little flat ones those ones. <laughs> we also have the fly and we have the ant. These only spawn on rubbish or rotten turnips. So like your cans specifically are what they will spawn on or rotten turnips. Fleas will only spawn on villagers. You will see them jumping off of them. And if you talk to the villager, they will tell you they feel itchy. This is the only time you can hit your villager with, them, with your net. I won't complain about it. They'll be like, oh God, you've saved me. <laughs> If you hit your rocks with a shovel, those rocks, you may have a centipede or a pill bug come out of these. These are the only way you can catch these two bugs. And again, same thing, you can't scare them off, just hit them with your net. But you don't have as long of a time frame as you do with the mole crickets. Another one that can be a little more difficult for people is catching a wasp. So for this, you can have your net out, providing you're not about to run into any tarantulas or scorpions. <laughs> and stand at an angle from the front of your tree. So you can see here I'm slightly to one side. Shake it with your net in your hand. The wasp nest will fall on the other side. Then just turn and face it, quickly tap A, and there you go. That is the easiest way to do it. Stand at that 45 degree angle. And then when you drop the wasp nest, your character turns at any way to face it to be in shock. And then you can just swipe down. The other specific spawn location that I forgot to mention before is the tree stumps. So I briefly mentioned it, but these are the citrus longhorn beetles, which you can get all year. And there's the violin beetle and there's another couple of ones at different times of year that will only spawn on your tree stumps. In between these sections, while I'm at the DIY bench in my house, I just wanted to mention the amount of uses you get for each of the flimsy tools, the regular tools and the golden tools. So for both your flimsy fishing rod and your flimsy bug net, you get 10 uses for that. With the fishing rod, whether you catch trash, whether you catch stones, it all goes into your durability. Your regular ones, which is your first upgrade of your fishing rod and your bug net, is 30. This is also the same durability as the ones you can buy in nooks. And finally, your golden tools have 90 uses. Now, the first thing I want to talk about with fishing is fish bait. To get this, you want to take a shovel and these little spurts in the sand across your beaches. Just dig one of those up and you'll get a manila clam. These you can then take to the crafting bench, you need no other materials, and make into fish bait. Although you will have fish spawn wherever on your island, this can be really good for those fish that you can only get in specific locations or under specific circumstances. For example, we have a few fish that will only spawn on the pier. So with my one fishing bait, I'm just going to run over to the pier, chuck it in, and I'll show you how to use it. All you want to do is find it in your pockets, click on it, make sure you're facing the body of water you want to throw it into, click scatter food, and it will fall into the water, and as you see, this fish will spawn. As well as having certain fish that will only spawn on piers, other locations are the river mouth, the cliff tops, which is your third level river, and the pond. You have specific ones that will spawn in the pond, like the giant snakehead, like the gar. You have ones that will only spawn 
on the cliff tops, like the golden trout, the stringfish, the char, there's a few up there. Those that don't specifically spawn on the cliff top, for example, are not excluded from spawning there though. So the black bass, its spawn location is just the river. That could be at the cliff top, that could be at the river mouth that can spawn anywhere. These aren't like exclusive areas of just these rarer fish. Here we have some of the pier fish. We've got the giant trevally, we have the blue marlin, we have the tuna. There are some others as well but I thought I'd just give you a few examples. There is also one fish that will only spawn when it's raining or when it's snowing in the ocean. This, I think I'm pronouncing this right, is the colacanth or the coelacanth. I call it the colacanth, I've heard it both ways. This will not spawn when the weather is clear, this will only spawn in the rain or the snow and it will only spawn in the ocean. This is one of your biggest fish. You may notice there are different sizes of fish across your bodies of water. You have size 1 to 5, this is a size 5 fish. One thing that can make it easier for when you're fishing in ponds is there is no water flow. This can also make it harder if that's something you rely on, so when you fish in the rivers or the ocean it will pull the bobber of your fishing rod a certain way. However, in the ponds you don't have that, so wherever you cast your line, that's where it will stay. So if your fish is flip-flopping from one side to another, you can pick an area that you know it's going to go back to, cast your rod, and it will eventually go back there. A trick that I and a lot of other people use when fishing is relying on sound alone. So it's very easy when you're casting your line to get antsy and to want to like pull it in too quickly. I'm very, very guilty of this myself. I like assume when it's gonna bite and I just like reel it in really quickly. <laughs> I close my eyes once I know that the fish is attracted to the bobber and I just wait to hear that final like thunk sound of when it bites and then I'll press A and then I'll reopen my eyes. This is a trick I've literally done since like Wild World <laughs> because I can't deal with it. I just, I get too anxious and I miss all the fish, but this is like almost foolproof. Sometimes it still happens, but the cast master knock miles achievement, the only way I got that was through closing my eyes and listening to when it was going to pull up. Otherwise I never would have got it. For that achievement you want to catch a hundred fish in a row without missing a single one, which is absolutely a bit of a feat, but I assure you that closing your eyes and listening makes it so much easier. <laughs> And that's just a few tips and tricks that hopefully help you out when it comes to catching bugs and catching fish, especially some of those rarer ones. The last thing you want to do is find one of those rarer bugs or fish and not be able to catch it after like hours of searching or months for some of them. I know the stringfish tripped a few people up when it came to completing their critopedia. That was one that I had to catch last as well. But thank you very, very much for watching. Please do subscribe if you're new, like the video, and comment down below if this did help you, if you learn anything, if there's any tips or tricks that you would recommend for anyone. I'm always open to learning new things. <laughs> thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!